Greetings metalheads and welcome to No Nonsense Metal Reviews. I'm George and today I'm back with another top pick review. Something that I have been revisiting very heavily over the last couple of months actually. Something that really was very influential in my development and very very important in my development as a music fan, as a metalhead. An absolute catalyst and that can certainly be said and will no doubt be the case for countless thousands of metalheads out there in the world. So today's top pick is 1984, album number two, Ride the Lightning from Bay Area Thrash Kings Metallica. Now, I know you're probably thinking, George, what are you doing? talking about Metallica, talking about arguably the biggest band in metal, talking about one of the most known discographies that's ever been, talking about one of the biggest enterprises in music. Well, I'll tell you what I'm doing talking about Metallica, talking about Ride the Lightning, is that whether we like it or not, they are one of the biggest bands in the world. And they are also one of the best. Now let's let's just take a moment to digest that. Yep, there are a lot of great bands out there. There is a hell of a lot of great metal bands. There's also a lot of great thrash metal bands. But Metallica really were there at the beginning and they were a catalyst. They were one of the first. Alongside bands like Exodus, alongside a little bit later of course, but Megadeth and Slayer. And then of course we have the Teutonic Explosion, we have Thrash creeping out of South America, we have it creeping out of Europe. Totally get that, totally get that, would not dispute that one little bit. But Metallica are one of the biggest and one of the best Thrash bands of all time. That first four album run, and some of you would include album number five, the self-titled Black album in that, and that's fine if you want to. I, I personally, I personally just prefer to think of it as certainly the the main thrash era as being Kill 'Em All through to Injustice for All. That's just it. Just sits a bit neater in my head. But that four album run is is one of the best four album runs in thrash. Of course, you know Slayer had a far longer run of doing solid as a freaking rock, wrecking ball album run. Anthrax had a pretty good run. Megadeth had a very good run. You know, not saying that other bands didn't, but those four albums, Kill 'Em All, is one of the most ripping thrash albums of all time. It's raw, it's unrelenting, it is merciless. With Ride the Lightning, things mature a little bit. Things have progressed. Things are a little bit more serious. Things have developed. And it's only a year later and what you've got here is one of the most sophisticated but still ruthless thrash albums ever period freaking period things obviously mature way further with uh, the follow-up 1986 master of puppets which again many and rightly so would consider that to be one of the greatest thrash albums of all time and that's absolutely fine but i think certainly for myself Metallica were massively influential in my metalhead development, Ride the Lightning being not my favourite Metallica album, definitely not, that will re remain kill em all for the time being, but was hugely influential. I, I, the first time I heard that I, I could have died and gone to heaven, it was just such an amazing experience and it's really stayed with me and I will admit I haven't listened to Ride the Lightning prior to getting into it again in a very big way recently probably hadn't listened to it since I did the album ranking of Metallica a little while ago. So it has been a while. But Metallica, you know, say what you like about the status they've reached, say what you like about the maybe the post Black Album era, doesn't matter. We've got some cracking, legendary benchmark albums in that early catalogue. I think for myself, I'm, I'm a person that likes to 
give in to my own nostalgia and I like to delve into to my own roots of metal. I, I, I believe it's important that we go back to our roots sometimes. It keeps us grounded, revisit those bands that really got you to where you are. Which is why I will periodically go on an absolute binge of Maiden or Motorhead or Saxon. The good stuff that really, really influenced me. Sepultura, case in point. But you know what? Metallica's Ride the Lightning, 1984, is absolutely freaking classic. It kicks off with one of the best Metallica songs of all time and just one of the best thrash songs of all time in Fight Fire with Fire. Soon as that sort of acoustic, nice little noodling intro starts, you know you're in for a neck-breaking time. And then those freaking Hammett riffs, those charging leads, James Hetfield's rhythms, holy cow. That is, that's thrash. That's the embodiment of thrash. And I don't, I don't care. I don't care what you say about Metallica, whether you love them or hate them. You cannot listen to an album opener like that and not be flailing and not be banging your head. God damn, that's some good stuff. Freaking great. What an album opener. Then we get the rather spectacular title track, Ride the Lightning. Wow, what a build. Those crunchy rhythms. James Hetfield's vocals. No, he's never been an, a, a, you know, an amazing, fantastic singer, but his voice was perfect. Perfect for Metallica and, you know, this raw, rough delivery. Absolutely brilliant. Ride the Lightning has freaking majesty as a track and as an album. What an absolute cracker of a title track that is. Then you've got one of the biggest Metallica anthems there in uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls, which is cracking. You know, it's a slower track, but we've still got some killer crunchy riffs there. Again, you can't, you can't tell me, even if you were a detractor of Metallica, that you check out a track like that and you're not headbanging. Because I think you probably are. 100%. Uh, you know, a, a big track, a well-known track, a fan favourite. It's featured in Metallica's live sets for many, many years. And even sounds good in its symphonic form, orchestral form, I should say, uh, correction, with the um, San Francisco Symphony Orchestra. I personally feel. But yeah, what an absolute classic, freaking majestic track. Then we get the first, well, really the first sort of Metallica ballad track, although it's a very powerful, strong song, beautiful guitar work. Kirk Hammett, that guy is freaking talented. And of course, you know, we all know it. We all know it. Look at Hammett, one of the, one of the best guitarists in metal, I suppose. If you look at his amazing guitar work in these early albums, certainly. That guy was absolutely blinding. But beautiful solos, beautiful leads. James does a really good vocal delivery there that's very powerful. You know, I know that Lars gets some real real stick for his uh, drumming style, but I, I personally never quite understood that. I'm not a drummer. Um, I, I certainly don't listen to Metallica for the drums. It's more about the riffs, but it's fine. I, I think the guy's fine. I'm not gonna, gonna criticise him. You know, he's obviously done something right all these years to be at the status that he is now. So hats off to you, uh, Lars, absolutely. But, you know, Fade to Black, what, what an epic track. What an epic track. You know, it really does break things up a bit where we get that pretty solid thrashing, ripping, three track start to the album then we get that beautiful break for fade to black which picks up towards the end and then it's you know it's got big riffs and it's great it's a classic track trapped under ice that is one that really gets the neck hurting for after that intro that that way that, that builds up again it's almost like the string same same sort of format that we get with um fight fire with fire you know, it builds and then it just absolutely lets loose. The barrage starts. Blinding guitar work, absolutely fantastic leads there, and those killer thrashing riffs. Trapped under ice, anthem, catchy, heavy as freaking hell. Probably not as anthemic as Escape, track number six there, which, you know, it's very. 
very hooky, very catchy, memorable stuff. It's good, it's almost got like a, a bit of more of a traditional heavy metal stomp to it at times, but it's good. It's good. A amazing guitars there. I, it's just all about the guitars for me with Metallica at this era and just great songwriting. You know, these guys were so young, 1984, Thrash was, Thrash, Thrash was developing fast, but Metallica would, they would, they were leading it. They were leading it. They were absolutely freaking there. And it's easy to forget that when you've got so many killer Thrash bands in the world now, you've got modern Thrash bands like um, Suicidal Angels or Cry Six or Angelus Apatrida. You've got loads of killer thrash bands from across the globe doing great, great stuff. No discredit to any of those guys. But then you've got bands like Metallica that really were the pioneers. And they are the daddies. Let's face it. They are the freaking daddies. Along with Uncle Slayer and weird, weird sort of disturbing cousin Megadeth. You know, they're freaking there. Creeping Death. Another one of the biggest tracks, the biggest tracks, most well-known tracks. Creeping Death is an absolute monster of a track. I don't care how many times I hear it, how many times I hear that being played in different forms. Wow, that's a masterpiece. Creeping Death, catchy, riff-driven, neck-annihilating, brain-liquidizing brilliance. Absolutely freaking love it. And then we close the album with a, I think it's like an eight minute plus, lengthy, instrumental, The Call of Cthulhu, which again, sounds great in its orchestral form, as it's been reworked over the years. But, but wow, what an instrumental. Uh, that is absolutely amazing. And it's bold as well. It's going from Kill 'Em All, which was largely shorter tracks, ripping tracks, you know, I say shorter, that's an eight minute long track, Creeping Death, you know, six minutes plus. Um, yeah, six minutes plus, then we've got five, six, you know, generally a little bit longer on this album, but short tracks, sharp tracks, you know, thrash tended to be characterized by slightly shorter material, but then Metallica, eight minute long, Maiden style, lengthy, amazing workout uh instrumental workout absolutely brilliant i love that track i think it's it's very iconic it's defining and it's a brilliant way to and very bold way to close out a killer album absolutely fantastic so this is an album which i love dearly and i know that a lot of metalheads love this album but i really do feel this is this is a masterpiece this is absolutely spectacular and I, um, I remember uh, a few years ago seeing a Ride the Lightning Metallica t-shirt in H&M and thinking, I wonder how many people who have purchased that have just purchased that because it's a big high street retailer and, you know, the artwork looks cool, the blue looks cool, it's eye-catching and not had any idea of the magnitude and significance of this album, of the, the artwork that's adorning their t-shirt that they picked up for six pounds or something. I've often wondered that, because this, this is a benchmark thrash metal album. That I just happen to really love, and a lot of other people do, and hey, whether they're one of the biggest bands in the business or not, Metallica make, I still say make, not just made, but make good music, period. So that's my pick for today. Ride the Lightning from 1984, a thrash masterpiece from, yes, one of the biggest bands in the business. I can like obscure stuff. You can like obscure stuff too, but we can both appreciate the gods of metal, the Maidens, the Metallicas, the Saxons and Motorheads. We can all get behind that stuff too and have just a good freaking time. So, if you've not heard this album, I'd be very damn surprised, but I'd also say, check it out. Because if you like your neck to hurt and your brain to swell, then Metallica is what you need. Check it out. What are your thoughts and opinions on Ride the Lightning, my friends? What are your thoughts and opinions on Metallica? Interested to hear. But thank you very much for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, share, 
comment. It's all very much appreciated. Check back soon for more reviews and recommendations of all the good heavy things. But until next time, stay freaking heavy.